everybody. Hope you guys are having an amazing day. So today we will be making some volcanic terrain. Gonna start out here with some half an inch installation foam board. And I have some sculpting tools here. So all I'm gonna do is, is just take chunks off this installation foam board here. I'm just gonna run it on the edge here. Now, I don't want it to look square in nature. So I'm gonna take my hobby knife and kind of round off the edges here. I'm also gonna make it to where it is not one square. It's gonna be more of a polygonal shape, I guess. I guess that's what it's called. I don't know, I've been out of school for so long, so that's what we're gonna call it. Again, going in with the sculpting tools here. And it's going to be really messy. You might want to have a shop vac handy when you do this. It's a long, tedious process, but look at that texture. That texture looks great for rocks. And next, I'm going to take the other end of that sculpting tool, and I'm going to take some more chunks out on the surface of this little plateau here. Now you can see I kind of rounded off one of those edges only so the players could feel like they're going up an incline to get up on this plateau here. Now this, like I said, this could be real messy. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna be painting over and it will cover up some mistakes. So just take out the chunks that you want don't make it all the same. Just kind of make it random and sporadic. That's going to make it more realistic looking, if you will. So I wanted a different variation of shapes and sizes for these rocks. I had some old leftover installation foam board from one of my other projects. So I figured, what the hell? Let's use these for, let's recycle and put these into play. Now I'm just doing that same technique using my sculpting tool and I'm just taking chunks off the sides of this, what's gonna be the rock here. It makes that nice texture. Now you could use a hot wire foam cutter here but the cuts are not gonna look as natural. It seems like when you just kind of tear these chunks off this foam, it creates a natural looking erosion effect. Next, we're gonna add some texture here. I'm just using some aluminum foil and I roll it up into like a little ball. And then I just roll it on the surface here. And as you can see, it creates these little divots almost like the erosion on a rock. It's a really neat trick that you can do, really easy. Anybody can do it. But look at that texture, the end result looks really good. And here's what we got so far. So I just rinsed and repeated those steps on a few different pieces here. And our next step is going to be to start priming this and start painting it. So to paint these, I'm going to use a mixture of black acrylic paint and some Mod Podge. Now the reason I do this is the Mod Podge will kind of seal this foam and make it st stronger. The integrity of it is going to be stronger and it'll add some weight to it as well and that's what you want you don't want this to be falling apart a few months down the line after you've worked so hard on this and now here's what we got so far got all of our volcanic rocks primed and ready for some different colors now we're going to start out with the next section and we're going to do some dry brushing. So let's get to it. So I already started here, but I'm going to show you guys what I did. 
and I just went on the edges here and I dry brushed it. And what that means is you take some paint, you wipe it off almost to like where your brush is dry and then you just go on the edges and it's going to catch the high points. Now here I'm being kind of messy on the top because I am going to try to blend in some other colors that I'm going to mix in to make it more of a organic volcanic rock here. So, so far, this is okay. So next, I'm going to use a combination of red, orange, and a dark brown here. If you notice, volcanic rocks aren't just black, and they don't just have grays in it. They, when the lava dries, it has almost like this earthy tone to it. Now, on the top of these rocks, I'm going to go in and kind of stipple in where I see a lot of that black, where the dry brush didn't pick up. So I'm just going to use a stippling effect here and just kind of go around and stipple in all that color on top. And this is what we get. Here's that color once it dries. You see how it almost looks like the burning lava and sulfur. It looks like a really nasty environment. And that's what we're going for here. So next, we're going to use some sculpta mold to make our volcanoes. And you're going to need some water. This is the sculpta mold when it's dry. And I like using a oversized popsicle stick to mix in. And you want to put a little water in, mix it up to where it's a consistency of like cottage cheese. And we're good to go. So I mix up this sculpt mode and I'm just gonna slap it on here. I put some parchment paper so that it doesn't stick to my workspace. And I'm just gonna make some small little volcanoes here. And I'm gonna use my finger to kind of make some little pathways to where the lava would be oozing out of this volcano. So I decided to take this a step further. Now this is a piece I started, but I didn't like how it was ending up. So I thought I was gonna just scrap it. But I went back and I gave it a second chance. And I said, well, let's put some of the sculpt mold around this other foam piece that I was trying to make a volcano out of. Now I also did go in beforehand and I put some PVA glue down and I put some sand and rocks on the plateau there just to give it some more texture. Now already I'm starting to like this a lot better. It looks more natural, like a natural volcano. So here is the sculpt mold. And I put some on the, another piece of the installation foam board. Now this stuff is going to take a few days to dry. I gave mine about three days to dry. Because you don't want to start painting this when it's still wet. So day three, give it the tap test. It's hard as a rock. We're good to paint. So we're going to do the same steps as the last pieces. We're going to start out with the black mixed with the Mod Podge. And then I take a light gray and I'm going to do some dry brushing. Now these you might have to do more of like an overbrush. And what that is, you don't really take off as much paint. So I just slowly build up those colors and look at that. Now I did the same steps with that color that I had mixed the red, the orange, and that brown. And I did an overbrush the same way that I did on the 
first batch onto these volcanoes here. So now let's create some lava effects. I'm gonna take my hot glue gun and I am literally gonna saturate this thing with a bunch of hot glue. And I'm gonna try to keep it to where the glue is oozing down that pathway that I created for the lava. It's gonna make it a much more natural looking flow here. And here they are once the glue has dried. So you see the natural flowing effect that we created by just letting the glue just float on the sides. So we're gonna prime it with some white just from the apple paints. And all the white does here is create a glowing effect of the lava. So you can be kind of messy here. If you get it on the sides, that's gonna be okay because you're gonna cover up anyways with the other colors. So don't worry if you get a little bit of the white on the sides, it's not a big deal. It's just gonna add to your effect. And next we're gonna use some red from the apple paints. Once that white has dried, we're gonna go over that white with the red here. Now, as you can see, the red is gonna be a very light color because of that white, and that's what you want. You want this lava to glow, and that undercoat of the white is going to achieve that. So I'm just going up the color spectrum, gonna go to orange. Now, I am going to paint about 90% of this red. Now I'm gonna leave the edges red. And the reason being is you wanna simulate the cooler parts of the magma here. So I'm just gonna stay in the central part of the lava with that orange and just go all the way down the lava fall here. And finally, our last color, yellow. Now the yellow is going to simulate the hottest points of the magma here. And I'm just using a stippling motion to kind of wet blend this yellow into that orange. You don't want to cover it up all the way. You still want that orange to shine through. Kind of like this once it's drying so you can see. Well, that pretty much sums it up, everybody. I appreciate you watching if you stuck with me from here. I appreciate you guys supporting the channel. And here's those final action shots.